Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, professional photographers of Idaho and beyond. I'm Bob Ryder and my very special guest today. Hi, I'm Sky Facet. And what do you Kimberly. do, Sky Facet? I am a real estate photographer. And how oh, we, we're going to get into we're going to get into so much. We're going to get into so much fun stuff this morning. Sky's brought her kit, and we haven't had a real estate photographer on here yet. Last week we had Jason McAdam, and he brought his Sony camera equipment, and he was our first Sony user to come on the show and unpack their bag, right? So we've had Canons and Nikons and you know all that regular stuff. And then Jason comes on and he's got this A1, it's their flagship camera. It was a great episode. And, um, and we talked to kids and family and life and, and, uh, and fathering and work, right? So we did all of those cool things last week. Did you watch the yeah, episode? I couldn't, I was working. Okay, so uh, <laughs> the good thing is, is these are all on replay so that you can catch these on replay. I'm just checking, glancing over, making sure everything looks like it's working. It sure does! Um, so welcome, let's go see who we've got hanging out here with us. If you're with us this morning, I want you to just pop in. Oh my goodness! I've got Mike Collins is here this morning, and I need to press this button over here so that people can see that. Mike Collins is here, let's come back. Larry's here, he says, good day. Good day. <laughs> I've been talking to Larry. Larry sent me a bunch of stuff about fall retreat this morning. I'm excited to have you here. Can you tell I'm like totally screaming? Rah! Bob's really excited and I, I think has had a lot of coffee. I haven't had a lot of coffee. <laughs> um, I've had one cup of coffee. And um, anyway, we've actually gone to fairly extreme lengths this morning for me to feel really good for our show. Okay, good. Um, I'm happy you Which included good. coffee and breakfast and uh, narcotics and um, <laughs> and I, I rode three miles on my recumbent bike and, and then we did some other things that the physical therapist has shown. Uh, if you're just tuning in for the first time ever, I've had spine surgery and uh, every day is not great, um, but we made extra sure that today would be great because we're gonna go to lunch afterwards, yeah? Um, we, if, unless you're like, I want Mexican food, we're gonna go to our favorite little diner. Okay. Cool. Okay, it's actually the same diner that Mike and I go to, and Brian and I go to, and Vince and I go to, and anyway, it's my favorite little spot here in town. So anyway, today we've got Sky Facet, and she's going to talk to us about her real estate photography, but you have some really interesting tools of the trade. I do. You do. And it's just for real estate and commercial work. Hmm. So and you're the first person, so I don't, I don't talk much about my commercial work. Everybody knows I do headshots, but we do commercial things. We do uh, industrial things. We photograph big, big things, large buildings, commercial things like that, right? Uh, and so do you, yeah. right? Ho hotels, restaurants, that kind of thing. Once in a while, I get those. Yeah. My largest building was a little over 10,000 square feet. That's awesome. And That's awesome. I shot pictures and did the eye guide in aerials within three and a half hours. That's crazy. That's crazy. Anyway, we're going to get to that. I want to talk. Um, let me queue up a couple of things here this morning. Uh, ooh, Bryce has woot woot lunch. Q is here. Good morning, Laquita. Um, girl, we need to talk today. Uh, let me punch in here. Let's do this. Laquita. Laquita, dear. We need to talk today. <laughs> Talking to you. Anyway, I'm being goofy, right? All right, so let's do that. Let's come back to the rundown. I've got some announcements I'd like to share with everybody. And um, the first thing that we're gonna talk about is coming up. Let me turn the music off over there and bring this up. We're gonna talk about next Friday is August 5th. And we're going to uh, have our monthly luncheon here in the Treasure Valley. It's a lunch social. It is not a period of time where we get together and do classwork or photograph things. It's literally just kind of a time where we get together to just catch up and talk about our lives and talk about what's going great and what, what's gone to heck in a handbasket, right? Heck, this is my show, hell in a handbasket, right? Um, <laughs> anyway, um, our socials are just that. Our lunches are just a time for our members to get together. We bring some guests. Uh, I brought my buddy Darren King recently, and he's an, our newest PPI member. Oh, good. Which is really exciting. Um, he's a real estate photographer also and he's just this neat guy. Anyway, that's what we do with our lunches. We invite people that we've met and we come together and talk about life and, and, and good times, right? Uh, and of course we eat food. So uh, if you missed the slide, of course, mostly uh, the folks that watch are our regulars, but next Friday, August 5th, is our first Friday lunch social here in the Treasure Valley. Um, I'm still trying to find somebody to host out in Idaho Falls, and I'm trying to find somebody 
And Twin Falls, and we should start. Yeah, get together. <laughs> like, so, so one of the questions that has been asked for a long time about, um, about our organization and about membership organizations in general, I don't know if you've studied the topic, I have, I have been uh, a board member for a Chamber of Commerce, I've been president of a Chamber of Commerce. Um, uh, membership organizations in general have been shrinking since the 90s. Okay. okay, and ours was no different. Like the '80s were the the '70s, '80s. That was the Joiner generation. Elks, Moose, Rotary. You name a civic organization, and they were flush with people because that's how they connected with their friends, right? But now we have the interwebs, right? Right. This internet thing and Facebook and and I don't know about you, but I feel like there's an awful lot of garbage out there. There is a lot. Like it's a ton of garbage. So why not get together with the people that you care about, see them face to face, press the flesh, hug them. Right? I, I value that. I treasure that so much. So anyway, that's what our luncheons are about. That's what our association is about. It's about building a community that's based around who we are as photographers, but we all share a lot of the really same things. Like some of us are full-time photographers. We've got lots of photographers with four-letter words behind them, W-O-R-K. They have a J-O-B, right? Yeah. They have the J-O-B. And they can't just be photographers all the time. So they're part-timers. We've got enthusiasts. They, they, maybe they're retired. I'm thinking of my buddy Vince. Vince is retired. Vince helps us on almost all of our big jobs that we do off, on location. Um, we've got a lot of great people in a, in a lot of different categories. But we all face that same situation. Like, how do we gain more clients? And how do we improve our skills? And, and why don't we share that with each other? Yeah. This is where we do that, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. I've so, learned a lot. Yeah. Well, how long have you been a member of PP? I mean, you were here way longer before I am. I mean, not that you're, I'm, I'm trying not to. That you're older than I am, because I don't think you are. <laughs> Holy crap, I stepped in it. Um, <laughs> how long no, have you been? Let's see here. I'm trying to figure out that. So I think around like 10, maybe 10 years. That's a good long time. 10, nine years So that I've you been a member. Favor? I'm going to put you on the spot. We didn't even talk about this. Oh, OK. Um, Tell me about current day PPI. Tell me what you love the most. I like the community that we have. And that's what I like the most. And that I can, if I have questions, I can call somebody. Like the other day, I had a problem. I, I'm not very technical. I'm kind of dumb in that area. I know how to work stuff, and I like to get my job done. So, so that I describes to, an awful I, lot of the. Uh, I had to call the, Bob and say, <laughs> "Oh my gosh, what do I need? I need to buy this new lens. What's going to work for me? I yeah, just want lens, it to work, and it's going to be good." And, and I, Bob's like, "This is what you need. Here's the link. Get it." I love it, and that's how I do my business. And you bought it from Picture Line out in Salt yes. Lake City, and it was there the next day. It was there the next day, which is amazing. Right, and you bought it from a local company. I mean, Salt Lake City's a drive from here, but that's our local professional store. I, we're not I'm sponsored closer. by. I'm closer. You are closer. <laughs> you got a spare room? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to spend uh, a lot of the fall down in Salt Lake City for volleyball tournaments, and I'm really excited about going and seeing Jens and, and, and the other staff and crew over there at Picture Line. And there's something I need there. I'm not going to look up because my wife's in the room. She's already forbade me from buying, but uh, anyway. <laughs> she's glaring at you. <laughs> no, she's not glaring. She's glaring at you because I'm not looking at her. All right, so then the next thing that I really want to talk about, and we were having a little bit of discussion uh, before we went uh, live about this, is our fall retreat is coming up. Yes. And uh, Larry Fry and I are the co-chairs for fall retreat, and I know he's been super, super busy this uh <laughs> this last weekend, this weekend that we just came out of, and, and last week, I know that he lost like four hours worth of work on Friday. Oh, no. um, or this would have been out earlier. But um, anyway, our fall retreat's coming up. And it is, uh, I'm going to put this slide over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add us in the, let's figure out a corner to put us in. There, they can still see us, right? OK, so okay. Uh, fall retreat's coming. We're going to be talking to this camera for just a minute. Uh, fall retreat's coming. It is September 22nd, basically through the 25th. 25th is our departure date. Um, so we are, your daughter's over there. She's, I see you. So we have a studio audience today. My wife is here. She's actually watching online and commenting, I think. And 
your daughter Sydney is yes. adorable, and she's over there. Watching How's the wheelchair? That's pretty too. comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty comfortable. <laughs> uh, she's so cute. Oh my god. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. We're going to go to Baker City, Oregon, and if you don't know Baker City, like most people know Baker City as an exit on the freeway with a couple of like truck stop gas centers, right? But if you get off into Baker City, there's these gorgeous parks. It's a historic, a historic and historic, historic Baker City. It was gold rush country up there. Yeah. Okay, and um, it's just this gorgeous turn of the century, like late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, small city, and the 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 building facades are incredible. There's this history there. There's a Carnegie Art Museum there. There's uh, there's an interpretive center that's moved into the museum next to the park, where we've rented a pavilion for three days. And right next to all of that is the Powder River. And right next to that is the library where we've rented a conference room for three days. Okay. So we've got an awful lot going on. And and within I'm going to say an hour. Within an hour's drive, I'll come back, right? Within an hour's drive, we're gonna, that camera now. Okay. Uh, with an hour's drive, I don't have tally lights, the system doesn't do that. Um, Sorry, I don't uh, know which camera to look at, so. Within an hour's drive of where we're based there at the park in, in, in Baker City, um, our ghost towns, there's the Sumter, the dredge, there's a historic a dredge, gold dredge, up in Sumter. Sumter is kind of, well, they call it a ghost town. It's more like a little tourist trap okay. town. Uh, but this historic dredge, I don't know if you've ever seen one. Oh, yeah, there's one in, in Idaho. Okay, so. And it's really it's cool. Four, you can... It's this four story high piece of machinery that sits in nine feet of water. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it dug its own pond as it went. Mm hmm. Absolutely incredible. You can go inside this thing. You can look at the machinery. There's there's placards that tell you what things are about, and I it's just so cool. Uh, is Bri talk? Is Laquita talking to you, Bri? Do I need to post that up there? I can't read it. It's too small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not going to post that. We'll keep talking about Baker City. <laughs> I'm going to come back to the rundown. So again, that's September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. 24th is the Saturday. Uh, we're staying through the 25th. Uh, into sa Sunday morning and we'll come home. Uh, my wife and I are towing our travel trailer up there to the A-Frame awesome. RV park. Larry's towing a travel trailer up there. I just talked to Katrina. I think Katrina and Kim are coming up in her fifth wheel, staying at the same uh, travel trailer RV park. If somebody wants to drive mine for me, <laughs> that would be awesome. That's what a husband is for. He, he's not going to go to a photography retreat. This is my time, you and can, he doesn't do okay, that. Okay, fair enough. I, that's great. And that is okay. Oh, we're that time. So we're right about that time where I should stop talking about things oh, and start okay. getting into things, but I still have more to talk about. So um, one of the things that Larry <laughs> wanted me to mention, and I'm going to cut this right over, um, we're going to do some classes um, Friday and Saturday, the Exposure Diamond. This is kind of uh, Larry's take on the exposure triangle. Okay. Okay, we've talked about uh, aperture and shutter speed and, and ISO for years, right? Right. Well, the exposure diamond is when you add flash into that. Oh, okay. Okay, becomes a four part formula instead of a three part formula. That is very true. It is. So Larry's gonna talk about that. Uh, Phil White is gonna present a posing for one light workshop. Awesome. Okay, and I'm gonna present a workshop on making money on the side hustle. Mm -hmm. And this is good for full-time photographers as well when you're doing things that aren't necessarily in your wheelhouse. So um, without giving, giving the whole thing away, is like we just photographed a birthday party for a 95-year-old. Okay? And all eight of her children were, A, are still alive, and all were there. Oh, how fun. So my friend asked me if I'd come photograph her mom's 95th birthday party. She's just going to be like 20 or 30 people there and all my siblings. I'm like, absolutely. Like, why would I miss out on that? And, um, and she's like, okay, then how much? I said, you, you literally can't afford what I charge, so just feed me. And sometimes that's, that's worth it. You know why? Because this job pleased the punch out of me. It just pleased me so much. We went together, my wife and I went together, and um, we had a great time, like totally welcomed into their family, and we made family portraits and group portraits and all of the usual stuff for like an hour and a half or two hours, and we ate their food, right? But then I made free, like, phone-sized pictures available to everybody, but I also put a lab link up. 
Very nice. And we sold about $500 worth of, of product. Net. That's not bad. Net. That's not bad at all. For doing a free event that I just, I got fed. I went to dinner with my camera, right? Took some pictures of some people I care it's about. It's always good when you get fed. So, so, that's, so that's what I'm going to talk about, is how you can make money with a side hustle, or how you can use the, these tools to make money when you're doing something that's outside your wheelhouse, right? So maybe you're, uh, maybe you're a great big studio, and you've got staff, and, and, you, and you do this huge in-person sales thing, and you've got all your samples, and it's fabulous, right? That's, that's a really valid, that's the primary way a portrait photographer is going to make right. his income, right? But what if, you're, what if you're going and shooting somebody's hockey player because it's their last hockey season of, of, the, of their high school career? Are you going to put that in your portfolio? I probably wouldn't. Nah, <laughs> right? So then, um, I'm still, we're still over here. Um, so then, that's where this concept comes in, is that you can, you can make money from that, even though you're not making money from that. Anyway, that's what I'm going to talk right. about. And then um, Jamia Carroll is going to put on a, a class about how to manage and plan your shoot and then use it all on social media. Okay, And she is bringing, this is what, literally what she does for Sam, right? That's awesome. It is pretty awesome. So our, our idea with Fall Retreat is to keep it simple and social. And I, we're there to have fun. We'll do a little bit of learning, maybe a lot of learning, but it's not packed. Like the, the whole weekend isn't packed. Which is because nice. Because we want you to have social time. I, I, we want you. So we, Larry and I went over there uh, a couple weeks ago, and we visited their Chamber of Commerce. We visited their City Hall. We visited their Parks Department. We visited uh, with innkeepers. We visited with, uh, with merchants. We visited, uh, my gosh, we stopped and talked to a ton of people and this is off season for a town that draws tourism. Yeah. So, so like, is there going to be fall color? There should be in September. Okay. I would hope. Well, I, end of September. I've driven through there. Okay. I don't. It's been a long time, so I don't remember how many trees and stuff. Oh there my are. gosh! The the park that we're in is full of big mature trees. Perfect. Oh my gosh! It's going to be gorgeous. And then the downtown corridor, which has these historic. Uh, anyway, I I got to stop talking about it because we got to get to you. Okay. Right? I've well, got one more point for him. This is kind of the piece de resistance of fall retreat, and I'm going to let you guys absorb this for just a minute. Okay. Um, with all of the tools that we're going to teach during the weekend, we're going to have a contest. It is a one press of the shutter button to make one photo. Then all of the photos will be put up at the same time to be voted upon to see who gets a free pass to convention. That's cool. Okay, I mean that's. I mean our conventions are like three hundred bucks these days because everything's expensive. Yes, so it is. So you could potentially win with one picture. But Competition only, is on. We're, we're going to come into the close camera again, and I'm going to say this. You only get to take one picture. One. One. One press of the shutter to make your picture. That doesn't mean you can't use your light meter. In fact, we're going to, I think Larry's going to talk about the light meter quite a bit. Uh-huh. Um, and, and how that might translate. Maybe you don't have a light meter. Maybe you're using the meter in your camera. We're going to talk about how to make the most out of that, how to make that the most effective. And uh, anyway, I, this is Larry's, like, I think this cont contest is Larry's, I think it's his deal, right? He thought this up, and I'm so stoked about it. It's a pretty Because it's cool so thing. unique. And it's such a great opportunity to maybe uh, get into a convention uh, at our expense. Anyway, that's that. All right. So I think that's all of our slides. I'm going to I'm going to fill this here. I need to click all of these off really quick. All right. And then so the next thing that we're going to do is talk about you. All righty. All right. Okay. So welcome, Sky. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> you know you're always welcome here, right? Like. Um, I've been to your house, you've been to my house. Uh, I think my son sleeps in your daughter's former bed. What? That's true. That sounds kind of bad, but it's She's like, it's oh, not. it's creepy. <laughs> That's not creepy. Like, your cool not. big bunk bed is in my son's tiny room. Yes, and it's an awesome bunk bed. It is super cool, right? It is. It has, it has a, a desk, desk underneath yeah, it's awesome. it. All right. It's great. So there we are. We did all of that without them even seeing us, right? So oh, that's fine. All right, so um, I, 
why don't you introduce us first to your camera bag? Okay. okay. And I'm going to prepare a slide for that. I'm going to go take a look and see what the social feed is doing. Uh, they're all having a conversation over there. Larry, man, what's it like to sit in an audience? Uh, like, Miss you, Larry. <laughs> Don't mind me She's over just here. Dumping the camera bag on the cart. There is a ton <laughs> of stuff that I actually carry around, but I do try to make my bag light, so it's really a small bag. And most of the time, I don't take it into um, the houses because oh, really? I usually just... Oh, you set your stuff up on the tripod. I set my stuff up on the tripod, what I'm going to need, because I already know what I'm going to need before I get into the house. Well, and if you take the bag in the house, you got to move it around. So I got to move it pictures, around. Right? It's just another thing. <laughs> um, usually, then I forget it because I usually hide it like in a pantry or a closet. Yeah, yeah. I have done, done that, that multiple times. So, so um, let's talk about your bag first, because this is always, everybody's always like, what is, bag is that? This is the one that I actually got at convention. Oh! <laughs> and it works perfectly for me. It's a Think Tank Exposure 13. Yeah, and it's, it's their Mind Shift series. Yeah. Um, I love these bags. I, my, so it just has like open My spots. camera backpack is a Mind Shift. It's just really simple for me to use. The only thing is, is I wish it came in different colors because everything I own is black and I lose stuff that's black all the time. All the time. Everything's black. Everything is black. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. So um, what I use on most on every single shoot is um, now my Canon R6 and lens, which is a 14 to 35 Canon. Mm, that's which the new one. Is the one that Bob told me that's to get. That's the new kid. And that is just, you know, it made my life easy because you knew exactly what I needed. And that's why I like this community is because if I have something like that and I don't really want to do a lot of research because I hate doing a lot of research, I can just ask somebody okay. <laughs> and I can trust you. I've got to pause you there <laughs> because Laquita. Yes. Laquita just registered for fall retreat. Good job. She just put it in there. Uh, man, that is so exciting. You must be all doing the, the pep talk over there. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> I, like, I can't put all of your conversations up because I, I see, like, you're writing paragraphs. But uh, this is super, super exciting. Um, the people that we care about come together. That is true. All right. And I usually go for the people more than anything. Really? That's, I mean, that's... that's 100% me. Yeah. So right? She's not even a photographer. She's coming with us because she just wants to be with her friends, right? Yeah. Okay. And so back to you. All right. <laughs> Bob likes to talk about him and everything else. So do I, though. So it's all good. That's why we're a good fit. We, <laughs> we just have to. So what Bob, I. Bob Quick might have mentioned that I might have a hard time talking over you. Oh, that was Kim. That was Kim? That was Kim Critchfield. Oh, it was. Yes, it yes, was. Yes, it was. Yeah. So um, every shoot, I put my camera on my tripod. And then I use these really, really cheap flashes from Young Nuo. Young Nuo and also their triggers. I have expensive triggers. I have two sets of different types of triggers. And I don't know how many times they did not want to work. So I went with these, and it just takes a little wire and plug it in to the flash, plug one into my, my camera, and they go off all the time. So I they like They do what stuff. they're supposed to. Yes, they do what they're supposed to, so. and I actually bought a heavier duty um, flash to use, the 8200. It's a brick. It's a brick, it's too heavy, and I have wrist problems already, so I decided to return it. It wasn't for me, and I'd go back to my cheap flashes. So when I was shooting real estate before I came to Idaho, um, I had a fleet, I had a whole bag of speed lights because they're perfect for lighting, and anti uh, room, room, whatever room that you're shooting, you need to light all of the rooms beyond it so you have yes. bright doorways, right? Because right. you don't want these black portals to nowhere. Right? And I do multiple flashes, so I carry two around, but that doesn't mean I don't walk into other rooms. Yep. And this actually, um, these triggers will take a picture at the same time, and that's another thing what I like about them, because some of the other triggers... So you can walk into the other room and... And, and push this run, button, and, it runs, and the camera. it runs the camera, runs my flashes. Okay. These are manual, so it's not like the... What is that? You that don't want the TTL. Yeah, the TTL. You wouldn't use that in a um, anyway. I wouldn't use that. So 
I can actually walk into a room now and go, okay, I need to set my camera to here. I think this this flash power is going to work in here and go into the next room, look how big or small, what light it has, what paint it has, and go, oh, okay, I need a quarter, quarter light, that's it. Yeah. And I can do that, then I come back to my camera, just look at it real quick, make sure it looks correct. If it's not, I change it, do it all over. Um, and then I take <laughs> multiple shots as well, and also a window poll. Um, yep. And then I send it to an editor because he is my savior. <laughs> he, does, he does a great job, and I know that you use the same editor as, as Cy does, right? You guys yes, are both using I, I, Kevin. Yes, I, I right? gave him and, that. Um, and I've talked to Kevin briefly, and then I didn't need that work done. Yeah. But uh, I love the way he edits your work. I want to come back to these for just a minute. Okay, yeah, um, go ahead. So um, I had a couple of the very expensive Canon uh, branded version of the 600s at the time. Um, and I supplemented that with a couple of the Yangnuos, and I found that I actually liked the Yangnuos better. I, I actually liked them um, a lot better. I thought uh, it was just a better piece of equipment, uh, which is surprising. You go to a brand like Yangnuo uh, that most people can't even say, and, uh, and you come up with a great product. It's a lot like Godox has been innovating. And, and now the big company, the big player, I, I won't say their name, but the big expensive light people. Yes. Um, the pro photo light people <laughs> are now knocking off a Godox product. Right. Um, which I just think is fantastic. So these companies have gone from cheap knockoffs and imitations to creating products that work really well. And, and these uh, hold up really well because they, I am a klutz and I drop these all the time. And these are these are white. They're manual lights, right? They're manual so lights. So they're like sixty bucks. Maybe I think 85. these were like eighty. Yeah. And then. Um, As opposed to six hundred. Exactly. For the Canon brand of the and same so thing. And so they do run out of power, and usually I can notice because it takes it starts. I have to up my ISO to get what I what want. And when I start going up too far, then I'm like, oh. I need batteries. Uh, I need a, actually, batteries are easy. Then right. I go and get a new flash. Oh, okay. And then I just kind of put the other one on a shelf or. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like over a period of time, they start over to be less effective. Over a period of time, and usually I buy like two sets a year. And already this year, I've already shot over 300 properties. <laughs> So you've all covered your payments on these? Uh, yeah. <laughs> My fantastic. camera lenses are all paid for, too. That's, that's Nothing's on, on credit. So um, real estate work is more about volume than anything. So it's a yep. lesser price, but you have to work and do a lot more shoots. <laughs> OK, so you have, what body did you say this is? An R6. It's an R6 um, with a 1435 RF mount, but you have an EF mount. 24 to 105? Yes. With an adapter here. Yeah, so this is the adapter. I'm not sure if you can see yeah, that. Yeah, we're bringing that right in. They can see it. Oh, OK. Yeah. So this is the adapter that I use for my 24 to 105. And usually I bring this in when I'm shooting like an Airbnb or I'm shooting um, like cabinetry for companies. OK, So shooting some detail work. More shooting some detail work. Um, and it works for and me. Who's, You've got a Sigma. Is this a Sigma? No, this is a Canon with this. Canon lens Sigma. Oh. I, I change these out and lose them all the time. So, and yes, every single time that I get these out of my bag, they need cleaned because I drive over 100 miles a day, and so dust astounding. just gets on them. And it's astounding. Just before I go to into the house, when I set up my tripod and everything before I go, I they clean my lenses. Quick poof, right? Rock oh, I have that too. What do you what do you like to clean your okay? Rock Usually area. this doesn't have enough. Okay. So I go it works. I'm leaving that alone. I know. <laughs> I probably do things I shouldn't do, but yep. I do. <laughs> okay. Well I you know, that's been my mantra all my life. But like <laughs> really like most of this stuff that I have, um, I used my Canon 7D for almost 10 years before I upgraded to an R6. So I try to use them their whole entire lifespan. Yep. Once my buttons started not working on my my 70s, 
then I was like, oh, I got to upgrade. That's a good time to move into the future. And since and everything's what? going into the mirrorless, I yeah. figured I'll go into the mirrorless. Can Canon has shut down their pro DSLR brand. Yes. Um, and uh, their consumer line is close to follow because they've just released two new uh, crop sensor mirrorless cameras, so I, I see that DSLR running the wall. Not that they'll stop being useful, not that they're going to go away. The only thing I There's don't like is the, the viewfinder because it's a digital viewfinder. It's and, different. And it's so when I'm in a dark room, I have to overexpose to see in the can, viewfinder can, and then go down to where, okay, good, I because that, that is annoying. Yep, I can fix that. This, that's is, why I, this that's is why I have Bob, because <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing in that area. <laughs> that's a setting uh, that we can adjust on your Well, when it comes, that's how it's set up, and it just should be set up the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, uh, anyway, I won't go into it. But, um, so what else do you have? You got a couple tripods over here. You guys all know what tri tripods look like. You do have the grippy head. I right? got the Pistol grippy head. head for when I do the real estate um, photography. Mm -hmm. And then I have a different head for when I do the eye guide. And is that just a ball head? It's pretty much just, the one that came with it. Yeah, just a ball head. So, cool. so I don't have. Even, they don't even know about the eye guide yet. No, they we're don't. still in your camera bag. Yeah, we're still in that. And I got a. You know, All even right, a drone so to do. Talk to me briefly about your spares. What spares do you carry? Um, the spares that I carry is pretty much batteries. Because yep. um, a lot of my work is around where I live. And so if something does go wrong. Like seriously wrong. Seriously wrong. Um, for one, my agents understand that, um, you know, when something seriously goes wrong, I'm going to have to come back. <laughs> and, and you're shooting homes that are static. They're here today, right. they're here so tomorrow. So it's not like a wedding right? where I would be carrying an extra yeah. body and extra lenses and yeah. all of that. But like if I have to go up, to, I have gone to Idaho Falls, I've gone to Boise, and then you, sh I do carry my extra well, body you know, at least. You're up this way and and I know people. Stuff hits the feet. You know people, right? You're part of this organization. Um, and I've even I've accidentally forgot batteries before. So now I carry an extra batteries and SD cards in my car, actually. They just live in your car? They live in my car. That's pretty smart. They live in my car. Um, my, I have a drone um, battery plug-in pack thing mm -hmm. so I can charge, charge my yeah. battery. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm helping. And so... Um, <laughs> We haven't even gotten to that yet. So There's let's a lot do of stuff in so, my car that I carry so around that lives in my bag. car. This is my camera put bag. Put all that crap back for just oh, a minute. Okay. <laughs> She's going to put that back for a minute. She's got. I'm going to bring. And everybody the next says slide. I'm bossy. No, well, I just want to move us along here. I want to get through. You know what? I'm really excited about. And if somebody has a question about what I do, they can ask. Well, they're going to have questions about those next couple of things. I promise you that. Okay. All right, because uh, it gets pretty interesting now, from here out. Now, which one's next? Uh oh. Oh, yeah, battery spares. Hey, Larry. Um, looks like we're going to get hit with some spam here on the chat. Ow. So okay. can you hide and block those for me? Uh, you'll need to be logged in as an administrator, I think, to do that. Um, but they're already on it, which is crazy because I've got a delay going. They shouldn't be able to repost if you hit them. Uh, so there's that. This is a problem. You see this over here on our social feed? I'm actually not on YouTube, uh, but we get spammers come through the chats, but I have them uh, pretty limited. Oh, but cool. Anyway, hopefully Larry can knock that down for us so that it doesn't interfere. Um, the next bag that we're going to talk about is your drone system, okay? So I'm going to pop that up while you're getting some of that over here. Yeah, I'll leave it just like that. Just like that. Okay, okay. Okay, so you, this is a low pro bag. Yep. And it's made just for drone. For drone. All right, coming right back to the camera. All right, let's go. All right. I'm not going to talk while you do this. Oh, are you sure? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm completely full of crap. So this is my drone bag. I just watched my wife nod her head. I know. She's <laughs> laughing over here. This is kind of like the setup for it. And I actually have used this for my other camera, too, um, when I didn't have a backpack. I just take my drone stuff out. But it has my drone, and it has my remote that connects to my phone because it's folds out. And those are your antenna. Antennas. And it also has the wire. So the what? Wire oh, that plugs, plugs into, into my phone. phone. Oh. And this, they change out. 
So you, I, whichever phone you have, you have your own set of okay. wires. Okay, that's pretty cool. What phone do you use, just out of curiosity? Just my iPhone. Okay. With the, their app. Like an iPhone 6 or something? Mine's a 13 Pro. That's what I have to okay. I yeah, but I don't really care what kind of iPhone I have because this gets saved to the SD card is what goes out to my editor. Yeah, okay. You're so, just using the iPhone at, to pilot the device and see yeah. what the device is seeing. This is super cool. I'm going to switch into this camera view. So this is it with it all folded out. And then and the batteries. This is the Mavic Pro, Pro 2. 2. Mm -hmm. And so that's pretty much the setup. I do have this light that I can use on it. It's for um, like twilights and stuff. Would, it's, that, would that work like interiors or whatever? No, when it's on, they can actually see this from three miles away. No. Yeah, when all these flash. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. And there's different colors. There's red and green. Um, I have Velcro up here to have it on the top of my drone, and I also have it on the bottom. Okay. Because sometimes I just let, I can't well, and see has, the drone. And this you're, has navigation beacons it, on it. It does. It has proper flight. But they're really, here, I'll turn it on. I'm terrified. I'm stepping back. I don't have it plugged into my phone, so it can't okay. go anywhere. <laughs> it does have lights, so you'll see them yep. blinking. But they're really actually hard to see once they get, get up in the air. Yep. And so, so that's to help you see the drone. And this is, this also is hard to see, but it's a little bit, you know, brighter. Yeah, and it's downward facing if you put it underneath. Yeah. So that makes good so sense. So that's me. why I have all that. Um, legally, you only can fly up to 400 feet in the air with your drone. You're not supposed to go over that amount without getting permission. And you can go online and do that. You have to have permission from oh, air traffic, traffic control. Okay. And so on my drone, I also have my certification number on here. I'm going to punch into that real okay. close. Uh, this drone is licensed by the FAA. Yes, it registered is. with the FAA. And even if you do it for a hobby, it's supposed to be registered. So at all times, I have this on, on my drone. And also, just in case it falls out, I have my name and number on the bottom of it. That's a big deal, like it falls into somebody's backyard. Because <laughs> yes. these do fall out of the sky. Yes, they do. They lose connection, and usually they're really good about reconnecting. But I've been out, and it has a lot of times disconnected from my phone, and I can't <clears throat> see what it sees. I can tell that it's up in the air because the remote is telling me that it's still up in the air. Go figure. But I have smacked it into the side of the canyon wall trying to get some pictures because I can't, you, it's hard to tell the depth perception between oh, something that's, that's gray and something that's black and it's on the other side of the canyon. Oh, I never considered the depth perception aspect of that because you're looking at just that flat screen. The flat screen and you're trying to keep um, line of sight at all times of your drone. Yeah. Legally, for anybody, you're supposed to be able to see the drone while you fly. You're not supposed to fly it out of line of sight. Of so once you sight. can't see it, you're not supposed to fly it, even though these can go up to a couple miles. Yeah. Unless you have a visual well, observer. And in some places, if you're flying in Texas, maybe you could still you can theoretically get, see your drone a mile you away. You can or get wherever. permission as well mm -hmm. for larger areas. that, And you're not supposed to fly over people without certain procedures as well. And so these are a few things that I have to carry around is my my drone license. Yeah. And every couple of years you have to get re relicensed which they just let you print it out on Recertified. Yeah. And then you have to carry around your certification of registration for and each you drone. And you keep all of this on you. All of it. All of it. So I have extras in my drone drone bag and then my my hard license stays in my wallet at all times. Brilliant. So Laquita asked, uh, that's really cool, are they hard to drive? No. These are so much easier than a toy drone. Okay. I, They're more stable. Years ago, probably 10 years ago, when the drone thing was really starting to take off. <laughs> Come on. The drone thing starting to take off? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Nice um, job. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no, she patted me on the leg. <laughs> nice job. Get on yeah. with it. Um, I, I tried to fly a friend's drone, and 10 years ago, it was like, Rawr! oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm these, done. These are so easy to fly. Well, and they have sent, like, they have anti collision. Yeah, they have sensors they have on them. To home. The only thing is, is like on the Mavic 2, it doesn't have side centers. Okay. side sensors and so that's one of the reasons why I actually smacked into the canyon wall and my darling husband actually did go retrieve it and hiked all over the place for it <laughs> and then I just sent it in and Mavic returned a refurbished one because that's what they do so it's kind of like their insurance policy to send it in so didn't get the exact one back but it's still Okay. Flies like fair enough. It's still works, so that's all I care about. But I did walk like the hall of shame to my um, client's door and go. Um, I couldn't finish the project because I crashed my drone. That happens. <laughs> and they, they... he just laughed about it and said, "Okay, come back when you get another one." So it was. You know, people are really, really understanding in this industry, and, and that's what I really like about it. I love the people I work with because they're so nice, and you know, they just kind of laugh about it. We with did me. a whole episode about that, uh, Larry and I, about working for people that you like to work for. Oh, it's like, the best. I don't it, care if I don't make a lot with them. These are the people that I like. That's and, the whole essence of, of why we do what we do, right? We love photography. We. Hopefully, you're working with people that you enjoy working for. Yes. And um, and if you're not, quit. Quit doing jobs for people that you don't like to work for. You know, if you pick up the phone, Larry, we did a whole episode on this, so it won't. And won't I do have a there, list but. of people that I I do not schedule with. Either a, because a, they burned a, me in the past. A do not fly list. A do not fly list. Yes. That's excellent. Yes. <laughs> Most excellent. Okay. So yeah, but I carry around um, extra blades in in the bag. This has like a top part, cleaning stuff, blades. Bob's taking a lot of abuse online, oh, just so you know. Um, and you can get our, our peers are not being kind. Neutral to Bob. density filters for for them. Um, okay, I so I, so let's talk about something that hasn't been said so far. Okay, is while this is an aircraft, it is an aircraft for the purpose of doing what? It's. It's really a, like another tripod. It's a flying camera. It is. Right? It has a camera, but I use the drone itself as my, I just think of it as a tripod. It's a flying tripod. And then it has the camera, and since I already knew how to use that, and a tripod, it kind of was really simple to go up in the air and just fly to what I like and take the picture. That makes great sense. And that where I... Sense where it's like a fast industry, I take multiple shots, and there's actually a setting in here where it takes five burst shots at different exposures, okay. and that's what I do instead of using so it's bracketing. my... So it, it does, it auto brackets it the exposure? It auto, auto brackets. That's brilliant. And so I don't use my neutral density And this has, this density has the filters. Hasselblad camera on it, Yes, right? it does. Um, it's not the zoom one. You don't need a zoom on a drone. You can fly closer. I just fly closer to it, right. and, no, and it yells at me all the time when I'm too close to something, but it, that's good. I watch it. What else, Bob? Well, I'm looking at the commentary. Bri definitely shouldn't fly a drone because her eyesight's lousy. Um, I think if we've got, so let's just talk briefly about the spares that you carry in your bag. Okay. What is this? That's for the, um... Can I rip it out of there? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah! What is it? It is the perfect size that you don't have to take your remote control handles off. Oh, you just put this in the middle. It goes in the middle. So that those don't get bent and broken. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's why it was stuck to the bag right there. And then it just goes in there. And, just, yes, and everything perfect. folds up and nice. And so... It's what, packaging. <laughs> it's packaging. It is. Everything... <laughs> is ordered separately. So my virtual tours, photos, drone is all ordered separately so I can look at my daily schedule and go, oh, I need this bag and this bag today. Okay. That's one reason why it's not packed in one big bag. That makes great sense. Plus, I don't like carrying around all my equipment all at once a and, lot of times uh, because it ooh, is I worth a lot of money. What, uh, how, how long is your flight time? About 25 minutes? About 15. 15? 
Yes. Wow. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm going to punch in here. <laughs> Bob's going to be very proud of me for this. This is like a first. Okay. <laughs> I've talked about this on the show before. Dude, date your batteries. Right? So you've got new 62822. Mm -hmm. So this is a fresh battery. The reason we date our batteries is so that when you start to see performance losses. Oh, and these swell. They do swell as they, add, so charging can cause swelling, which will cause them to not fit well in the aircraft. And that's um, when you know that you need a new battery is yeah. because they won't, it, they start not this connecting. This one's a full year older than this one is. Yep. And you'll start to see performance losses, you'll start to see the swelling, and it's just nice to be able to keep track of what batteries you've got on board. Um, and it all depends on how hot and cold it is outside on yeah, how absolutely. long these will last. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting stuff. But yes, um, I've does had altitude have anything to do with it? Um, like, let's say we're flying at 6,000 feet, not, can't, not, no, can't no, no, fly no, 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 you're in Denver. Oh, it hey, will. You're already be, at 6,000 feet. Just because it's colder. Okay. Yeah, and depends on how much um, wind speed there is. So I actually, on my phone, I have an app that um, tells me what wind speed it is at different levels. At different altitudes? At different altitudes. <sighs> Brilliant. And so I do like to check that, especially around like where I live, we have the canyon. And so if it's already like, like maybe even 18 miles per hour where I can still fly, but I'm close to that canyon rim, I tell that'd be a terrible place to have your drone struck. I, I tell sky. I tell my client I'm sorry, but you know the turbulence is there. It can take out my drone. Yep, not and flying today. So I can't fly. So that's just being really smart. Well, yeah, because I, I don't want to lose it. And some agents have asked me, "Oh, well, how much is your drone? How much is it worth?" I was like, "If you want to buy me a new one, if it falls out of the sky, it's over two thousand dollars." And they're like, "We'll come back another day." That's exactly right. what they say. They're right. like. Oh, if it was a couple hundred dollars, it'd probably be like, okay, cool, go go try it. Yeah, no. When when I start talking about thousands, so, they're like, oh, this is expensive equipment. When I first brought, so Sam started these uh, lives. We started these lives on Facebook, but Sam started at his studio, and then we were doing it there for a while, and then about a year later, we brought him in here in the small studio, and uh, we did an episode, which is still one of my favorites, and I'm probably going to redo it with Larry because it's such a such a strong thing, but. There's so much power in being able to say no to your client, right? There, like, there is. No, I'm not going to risk that. Yes. And no, I, that's outside the law. I get no, asked that a unethical. lot, like edit like walls, like holes in walls and stuff like that. I get asked to edit those out. You, you bring in a team to fix the hole in the wall, and I'll take it out of the picture. That's what I do. And they have to send me a picture of that wall before I even touch yep. my picture. Because you've got to keep it ethical, right? Well, MLS, they'll get in trouble for it. And then it's, it's the agent will, will more than likely it'll come back to me because I'm the one who did it. And yeah, it's just not worth it. It's just right? not worth it. All right. Um, spares in here. We've got batteries. You've got memory cards. You've got spares yep. of your license copies. We've got this bag covered. Yeah. Yeah. All pretty, right. Pretty Let's, much. Yeah. I'm going to queue up the next thing. And the next thing is called, can I say this? It's the eye guide. Eye guide. <clears throat> Oh, what, what's the question? Let me go over there. Um, I don't know who this is. Me. Do you? Oh, that's you? <laughs> oh! That's funny. Oh, no. What did she want? Uh, she says, what's the most embarrassing thing that's happened while taking pictures? <laughs> And, and your course. daughter asked this question. Of I, course I, she would ask because she knows. So what's your username? Trash. I don't know. That's why I didn't put that up because I didn't know if that was one of our spammers or scammers. But it's you. Hi. You, what do you have a picture of? Wood? No, that, that's stairs. That's stairs. I have no idea what that is. I can't okay. see it. I, well, so I saw the question. So what? And tell us. Let's make sure we're here. Yeah, we are. Oh yes. Tell us. That's what's nice. the most embarrassing thing that's happened well, to you while taking pictures? I was in this house in um, one of our littler towns around us. And nobody was there, the agent wasn't there, but the house is kind of dirty, it's small, happy they're not scratch and sniff pictures, but go into the master bedroom to go take pictures of the master bedroom and there's an adult toy on the nightstand. Yeah, that was pretty funny. 
I literally had to call the agent and tell her about it because it was so funny. You were like taking pictures with your cell phone? No, I did not take a picture of it. No? No, I just kind of zoomed in. Was it a hit? Never mind. We're I not zoomed go. in a little bit <laughs> to just crop it out of the picture even though it made the room smaller. That's above my pay grade to touch that. <laughs> So, uh, so, and men's underwear. You wouldn't yeah, believe no, how many I mean, times gross, right? men leave their underwear so hanging around or when, bras hanging up. Oh, so we owned a retail <laughs> store, right? Uh, way back in the day, we owned a, a retail bait shop on one of the largest lakes in, in California, on, on the largest lake in California, uh, Natural Lake. And um, during the summertime, we had to put up a sign that said no boob money. Because these big oh, women would yeah. come in and they'd like, oh, they and deep down into their bra. And, Pull out this, this, I'm like, nope. Give me your debit card. Oh, I've been into houses with with cat dog poop on the yeah, floor. And it just comes with the industry. We shot, um, a, we shot, a, we shot an empty meth house. And uh, like it had been a meth lab. That was a quick shoot. And it was. She stood at the door. We. Oh, I've been in some of those. She, she was licensed to carry a gun for years and years and years. So she stood at the door. Uh, with my camera bag just inside the door with the door slightly open and uh, prepared. And I literally just ran through the house and shot from the, the waist. And I'm like, that room, that room, that room, that room, this room. And like they'd torn all of the pipes out of the walls and the, oh. all of the copper. They'd done, they stripped the house out. Um, and my agent didn't care. Like the, oh, the no. agent that I work for, we shot all of her homes. I just talked about this last week uh, with Jason. Uh, we shot everything for her because it was one thing she just didn't have to worry about, right? Right. And then uh, she sold the house for cash three days later. Yes, and I, I do To pipe growers. <coughs> I do that a lot. Because they don't care if there's pipes. Anyway. Well, I, I shoot a lot of <laughs> homes that aren't nice, but that's the ones I, I show on, how, my, you're, on my you're Instagram. You're 11? Are you 11? Yeah, she's yeah. 11. Um, I want to know how you knew that story about... Because I, <laughs> I, I talk in front of her. <laughs> you're precious. All right. Okay. Here we go. We're getting into the eye guide. I'm going to put that up for everybody to see while you're getting that ready. Um, this is a 3D tour camera. This is the OEM case, right? This came from the manufacturer. This came from the manufacturer. Okay, very cool. So why would I buy a different one? No, it's custom for this piece of equipment. I'm enamored with this. I think this is super cool. And when we get this finished studio, studio finished, um, I'm going to hire you to come in and 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 do a virtual tour of my studio. Cool. Because why wouldn't you offer a virtual tour of your studio to your clients? Well, with agents. It's because the house is really bad. No, I just, I just mean in generally. Like if you've got. But more businesses are doing that because you can integrate it to if I um, a Google Maps too. If I owned a cafe or a coffee shop or uh, a retail store and I had different departments, and uh, why wouldn't you do this? It's actually really. To show your customers. It's really great for that. It is. One of the things that we hear frequently is I. Uh, and, and, and this is part of folks, I'm talking to us as photographers. Right, one of the things about our industry is folks hire you to tell them what they need to do. They want to know how, they want to be told how to dress. They want to be told how to pose. You can't not know that stuff. You have to at least have some idea of how to get started with that stuff. And, but one of the things that, that, that you can pre-do for them is help them understand what they're walking into. Oh, hey, I'm going to go to this guy's studio. Yep. Like, I sent you a blurb about our house, our address, yep. and the entrance to our, I type studio door, and all that populates. That's cool. Okay. You're going to have to teach me On that. my iPhone. Because this is the same. I send this to all my clients. I text my clients the morning of their, of their shoot, right? So on the morning of the shoot, I'm like, look, super looking forward to seeing you at 2 o'clock today. Um, I type studio door, one word, and it populates. Our house is, our address is, um, park in the driveway if there's an empty spot, door to the studio is, and, and all that just off to my person, With, with right? mine, it's through my website, who I host all of my tu my photos and tours. Yeah. Um, they have, my clients have their own um, account, and every time that a shoot happens, I put in the date, the time, and then it emails it to them that says that this the house it must be ready to go, and this is this is the time place where All we're going to be. All your pre-flight stuff, right? All the pre-stuff. Yeah. And then 
the photos get delivered that way too, with their bill. <laughs> and they can't really download until they pay. So what's the system for that? Is it Pixie It's Pie called or um, HD Photo Hub. Yeah, I've heard that. And yeah. they're awesome so people. In the, in the real estate industry, and we'll just, I'm just going to inform a little bit, uh, in the real estate photography industry, it's uh, not uncommon for, um, for some agents to not want to pay for the pictures unless they've sold the house. Yes. So one way to avoid that is they have to pay to download the pictures. Yes. Which is why HD Photo Hub is so useful. Yes. And right now I'm dealing with one person that went around it. It only happens every now and again. This is the first time in like three years since I switched to HD Photo Hub that it's happened. But I'm working with her. So it happens and it happens in every business. What can I say? Yeah, it does happen. Like you get guys, you know, people they can write me a dash. check and it could go bad. So. But for the most part, people just pay it and go, and, and that's right. it. And, and that's just your system, and that works really well. I've only had one person um, get mad at me for my copyright. Well, that's their they, ignorance, They want right? to own the pictures, and they I told them the they pictures. don't own it, and he won't hire me again. But that's, And that's his prerogative. That's, that's totally And fine. you know what? You pumpkin plan that person right out of your work profile. It, yep. Yep, that person's gone. That person's a weed in my pumpkin patch. I don't need that weed because I'm growing giant pumpkins. <laughs> Gone. That weed is gone. You don't need the and headache or the hassle. And now he's actually using. I can see that he's using somebody that doesn't do as good a work. Well, that's how that works. And that's how that works. Who's, anybody who's a professional at what we're doing, yes, is, is going to require that they retain the copyrights because these are your images. You can use them yes. for your portfolio. You could resell them I'd to resell another them realtor. I to another agent if the they time. did it. And the reason why he didn't like it is because I brought it up to him that he gave my photos to another real estate agent and I told him that he could not do that. They're not his to do And then with. I called the other agent that had them and had him pay me. Perfect. And they both weren't happy. Tough shit. But that's, you know, kind of how it happens. Yep. So you have to like have a little and, bit of a backbone and, you, and you piss off some people, but for the most part, most of my agents actually call me now when they have um, their listing changeover. And they usually tell me, this agent Excellent. might use them. I'm watching. I want you to watch. Or if I'm really good with them, and it's been a while, and they had the staging done, and they paid for that staging, and they don't want another agent to use it, I, I do go, OK, yeah, that makes sense. You paid yep. for all that extra work to be done. Yep. So That's fair, too. And that's honoring the client. Yes. See, this is a two-way street, right? It this is. is a, this could be its own live conversation about how we're, how we're treating the clients. Okay, Larry, we're going to talk about this. All right, let's bring this okay. bad boy out of here. Rah! She lifts it out. So here, can you hold I got, that? I got it. Because this will sometimes fall over. Holy cow, there's a whole camera on the back of this thing. Yes, it is a Canon camera. Yep. It's a Rebel, I think. It's a T100. Or something like yep. that. I don't know. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, she, this thing is not like lightweight. I'm going to... No, it's not lightweight. I'm, bring do this, I'm, don't, I'm not going to try and club okay, you with here. I'm going to bring this into a tighter. I want you to be able to see this. I'll put my eyes next to it because the camera's autofocusing. So and this is your eye guide. Yes. And one side looks like maybe a battery pack. It's over a battery here. pack, and then this is their LiDAR system. Okay. And so it takes measurements of that. And what of the lens house. is on? Oh, it's their lens. This is a custom 180 degree lens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bob wants one. No, this is super cool. You know, the thing is, is I don't need one of these because no. you have one. <laughs> well, it, yes, exactly. I didn't mean to be that sinister. It just came out that way. It's all, right. all good. So this is the eye guide. And um, so let's... They I want have you to, two different um, cameras. You got it? Now, yep. Okay. Um, this is... This is the first one that they had. Okay. Um, the other one uses a, oh, a Theta, I think yep. it is. And I don't theta like v. the quality of the picture as much. That's because it's like this little, e yes. tiny little thing. But what I like about this system is that instead of Matterport, you can't go in and change the pictures. So if I have a client that wants something blurred out in, in their tour, I can do that for them with this system because it, um, once I get it back from iGuide, there's pictures of it that I can download 
and do the editing that I need to do and then slap it back into, right into the, the tour. tour. So um, while you talk for a minute, I'm going to put this tour okay. up. And I'm just going to say... And I, I, and I do ahead. carry around a um, tripod release. Yep. Mm, I just don't plate. ever have it on here because it doesn't want to fit in the box. That makes sense. So I don't want to break it. All right, so I'm going to drop over to um, I'm going to I'm going to put my iPad up on the screen here. Okay. And, and this um, connects to my iPad when I'm doing a house. Sydney, can you hand me my iPad since you had it? That's okay. I think everybody knows with the iPad. Well, does yeah. it connect with the cable or is it wireless? It connects, and um, it's okay, Sydney. But what I do on on the iPad is when it connects to the iPad, I mm -hmm. have to put in like the address, how thick the walls are. And then while this is shooting, then I have to start moving the scans to start kind of putting together that floor plan. Okay. And they do have it where it automatically makes it, but so it's I, weird. On my iPad Pro, yep. I've got the 13 inch iPad Pro 12.9, whatever. Um, this looks absolutely gorgeous, right? And I'm just touching on these circles to move into these different places? Yep. You just moved into like the bathroom. I just went into a bathroom. And then down below those On that see, left hand side. Yeah. I'll make that bigger. Is I'll, I'll a bigger. floor plan and wherever you're at it's going to show you what angle you're yep. looking at. You see the gray area here. It's up looking into the bathroom. Let's move. I'm going to move back out to this family room. Right? So you saw that move over there and I'm actually looking out the back door. Right? Yep. So if I come this way you see that angle, that cone is facing out. See, I hadn't noticed that before. I'm glad you pointed it out. Um, but then we're going to look around through the room, and I can look up. So you'll see the detail on the ceiling. This is insane. And this is with um, the eye guide that, and you do have to move it. It has like this little twirly thing on the bottom here. Yeah. And you can hear that click. Yeah. Well, that you have to do it three times. So okay. you do take one picture, so it's on and tripod. then you move it, and then you move it again in that same tripod. Okay. So it takes in three that same pictures. Position. Yes. And it will tell you if it's off long, like it's tilted. If it's not connecting or, or not. something. Oh, okay. So it's straight. Off axis. If yeah, if you're off axis, it's not going to look good. So I want to see what the comments are on this. <laughs> yeah. Q I agree. I think that you're talking about this here. That's really neat. Uh, Larry, <laughs> see now, Larry, I knew this would catch your attention. Now that's cool, right? So I still have this uh, broadcasting what my iPad is seeing. And on my iPad, this is full screen. And I hope you're watching this on something other than a cell phone because this would be tiny on your cell phone. Yeah, it's going to be really tiny on the cell phone. Um, but this is really incredible. Now, can I go down this hallway? Yep. Oh, my goodness, I just moved into a room. Yep, now you're in the foyer. Now I'm in the foyer, okay. I'm going to move into this room. This looks, oh, a little piano room. Oh, a little settee, kind of a... It's like their sitting room. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. This would be Bob's library, okay. I like to do the eye guides more around, like, noon, 1 o'clock, because then I don't have to worry about, like, the harsh um, sunlight coming through the windows. So does this take me up the stairs? Yes, it does. Good Lord. Okay, this is super, super, super cool. And so now it just showed you that you're on the second level. Like, you just went downstairs. I did. So, so you go take up. me up. And now click up there. Click up here. Yep. Oh! And now it just changed the floor plan to your second floor. Oh, over here on the left. You can this. click down here as well, and oh, you can and, go and from the main, main floor to the second. This is brilliant. What's, what I really like about the eye guide and what I like about it for my clients is that it comes with these floor plans yeah, that they can print out. Then also there's like a little like ruler. Yeah. You click on that ruler, and it's going to give you the dimensions of the rooms. Over here on this left panel that we've yes. expanded. This is incredible. Yeah, and it also gives you So I've got to ask this question, and, and I know that this question should be coming through. OK. <laughs> he says, I have zero use for this, but I want one. Larry, I think you and I could do something interesting with this. There's never zero use for a tool like this. This is something super cool. Well, during COVID, um, our, the Twin Falls Fair didn't know if we were going to do um, like uh, the photo department for um, having the fair. And they decided not to do it, but I offered them to do like a virtual tour so people could go online and still view, view the photography building with it. So I've got to ask, I, 
are these, is this footage, is this all edited? Yes. And Who, actually, um, well, what Does I Guy do that for you? Yes. Because this is gorgeous. So on this tour, it is, I just used their autom automatic mode <clears throat> for auto exposure. It does um, HDR. Clearly, it does a beautiful job, And right? once I get home, I have to make sure that everything, like the, the floor plan is what I like. Um, I can change the contrast a little bit, color automatically. Usually, though, it's so good that I don't really have to touch it. Yeah. And Got so. Got kids room over here? Yep. Might have to there? click over here. To oh, get my gosh. And so um, I just ship it off to them. And then they, they actually have architectural drafters that do make up the floor plan and everything, and then they send it back. So this- And it has like a year of hosting that that's included with it. Oh, so this is something that you, and that you awesome. outsource, right? Like this is part yeah. of your outsource process. You do the shoot, and then you send your pictures, your stills to Kevin, and um, and this to iGUIDE, yep. and it comes back to you as a finished product, mostly finished product. You review it. Yep. If it's all satisfactory, it goes off to your client. You get yep, paid. Yep, I just copy the links and put it into HD Photo Hub so they have it. <laughs> and I don't know if you 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 put a um, one of my tours that HD Photo Hub does, one of my websites for homes. Oh, ha! My client. I didn't realize he was in there. That's funny. That's nice. I missed him. <laughs> This is, well, anyway, I love this. I'm going to come back. We're running out of time. Um, honestly, I, like, we've had a whole bunch of people in here. We've been doing this all summer. I think we've done eight or nine of these What's in My Bag series. Um, and you are the last of our summer series. I've got Brenda Leap going to come in at the end of August. We're going to awesome. try to squeeze one of these in once a month. Just as a little bit of variety. We've got a cool episode coming up next week, which I want to pull up into... Um, my announcements. Oh, and there is a special piece of equipment here with the eye guide. Oh, wait. It's my cheat sheet if something goes wrong. <laughs> um, so, like, you're on your you're you're on your iPad and Let's turn this around. You know, just like you have kids. Um, sometimes she closes out of the IP address that I need. Oh. And I don't remember it. Well, there you go. <laughs> So instead of freaking out, I just keep that with me, that makes and then good I sense. can type it in. There you go. Or if it needs to, because it does sometimes need to be recalibrated. I I have some stuff where it's like, oh, is it on this? <laughs> like I said, I'm not very technical. <laughs> um, it is time for us to wrap things up. All right. Um, I want to mention a couple of things real quick, and actually, let's. I'm just going to do a quick hide. We're going to come back. I want to mention one more time that next Friday is our uh, luncheon here in the Treasure Valley. It's over at Idaho Pizza Company. You do not have to be a member to come to this. Um, our hope is that you would come and meet our members and want to be amongst our membership, right? So that's part of it, but it's just a great time for us to get together, eat together, and socialize. Um, and then um, we've talked about all those other things. I want to talk about uh, our next episode. Um, this is going to be uh, back with uh, just Larry and myself awesome. back on set here. And we're going to talk about jump, do nothing, or dump. And what is that? Well, you'll find out <laughs> next week when you watch the episode. Okay. Uh, but this, this is really something for all of us. Okay, If you are, and I know you are, all, all of us at some point you know, we go through this, this curve of, wow, this, this is awesome. This is the best work I've ever done. Wow, I suck. Wow, oh. I'm doing really well. Man, I suck. You know, you, That happens all the time. All the time, right? This is a creative process. So sometimes you're not happy with the thing that you've produced. Um, I just had a, photography, a photographer reach out to me. One of my best friends reached out to me a couple weeks ago. He's, God, I did such a horrible job last night. I hate what I've done. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, it's okay, because they'll love it. And I, go, I do, and they talked them off the ledge, and it was cool. I go through that, too, with, with even real estate, right? I'm right. just like, oh, my gosh. Why am I doing this? This is horrible. 
And usually it's because <laughs> I've shot so many just spec homes. Uh, spec homes suck. That it just kind of gets boring. Yeah. Because if they're, you there's just walk in, there's about nothing spec special home. about them. And so usually it's when I get some nice, cool home or a different so, feature, it's like, Oh my gosh, I can kind of be creative. <laughs> yeah. So that's what this episode next week is going to be about. It's about jump. And the jump is, I, I don't want to blow it all, but the jump is, is, is getting in deeper. Right? You're going to get in further. You're going to get in deeper. You're going to take some risk. You're going to make some more money. Okay? You can do nothing. You can continue to be what you are. When you take the same risk, and you do the same thing, you're going to have the same results. And that might be OK, right? Yep. And then the dump is, I hate doing this. I'm not going to do this XYZ thing anymore. That was me with weddings. That's <laughs> most people <laughs> with weddings. I was like, no. Nope. And right now, I even get called to do family portraits. And I, I. I refer somebody else because I'm too busy and I absolutely love my homes. Could you do me a favor uh, without tripping over my tripod? Just go to that first top drawer up there and right about where you're going to stand in front of the drawer, move to the left, that left. Keep going, top drawer. It's in the box of business cards there. Yep. Would you just uh, slide one of those, come around the side here maybe and hand that to me. I'm going to put this back up so you don't see this transaction it didn't actually happen this way um, and I'm gonna come back to this camera um, in my studio we have an arrangement with Kelly Zimmerman at oh. the 8th Street studio very nice okay so this is um, basically their business card on the front um, I don't do families I don't do children I'm pretty straight up about it, right? Um, I've been asked, I get asked all the time. So this is a $100 gift certificate to the 8th Street Studio. And it's a gift courtesy of Bob Ryder, Headshots and Commercial Imaging, all right? And it spells out what they do. Family portraits, newborns, children, high school, seniors, and pets. And if somebody's watching from Twin Falls area, please, if we want to do something like that, I would love it because I have a lot of agents that are always calling me for headshots and families, anything like that. And right now, I just don't take them. Yeah, so you need a partner. So listen, folks, we are not competitors. We're collaborators. Oh, and I, all, and I talk to my, the other real estate photographers, too. Well, you have to. We talk about you know, what's going on in the industry. We what's talk working, about what isn't. And, and you know, if I go on vacation, they know that I'm gone. So gonna, then, yes. you know, yep. they take care of me. I take care of them. This, all of that. This is good business, yeah. right? Um, and I only refer to other photographers within our membership. And that's another thing, too, is that okay. I, I like to do um, that. I gave you a referral recently. Yes, you did. Yep. Um, I sent you one of my buddies, and he does his own photography up here. Yep. Um, did you guys talk? Yeah. Yeah? Um, he just lives like a mile away. In um, fact, I think I actually did that shoot. You did? I did do it, yes. Yeah. He told me he There's so many him. homes I can't remember. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But he asked me, he, he's like, hey, I know you do this. I don't know why I can't get him into the membership. But uh, hey, I know you do this thing. He's also a broker, right? So he's a broker, he's an agent, and he does, uh, he shoots a lot of his own listings because he's learned some skills. He's, we've, he's taken some classes from me. And um, anyway, I refer within our membership because we've built a relationship. And I'm not going to refer to somebody who has a lesser level of service than I do. Kelly came to me one day. She came out to my studio when we were in downtown Meridian. She's like, look, I, you, you provide a level of service that, that we provide that same level of service. Right. It's just in a different niche. Now, Phil does what I do. Oh, right? yeah. Her business partner does what I do. Um, so this isn't necessarily a two-way street where she's sending me headshot business because she's got Phil, and he does mostly that, that headshot side of things. But this is a great way for me to serve my customer who I've clearly got in the studio. Um, we had, I, I just said this a few weeks ago, we had Mayor Tammy in here a few weeks ago, and um, we did her headshots, and then she's like, would you come up to McCall and photograph my family for me? I'm like, no, nope. <laughs> sorry, I didn't do that. She's like, really? I'm like, really? Listen, if, if I don't love to photograph families, 
then when I come to photograph your family, you're not getting my best. Exactly. Me, right? So if you're, anyway, it goes back to an episode that we talked about this recently. Um, go look it up. It's all on YouTube. The last thing we want to talk about, we are really, really out of time. Sorry, um, we talked a lot. My buddy Larry usually covers this, but we're going to close on this. Okay. And I'm going to let you say, go ahead and read that out. Join us. Oh, that's what I was supposed it's, to read? <laughs> yeah, well, it's ppofidaho.com. Uh, join your professional organization. We are your state affiliate for Professional Photographers of America. Um, this organization has been around since the 1960s. Okay, this is not a fledgling organization. This is not an organization of people who don't care. This is an organization of friends and colleagues and uh, curated contacts. Right? So yeah. 100 bucks a year or 10 bucks a month, uh, come be a part of who we are and what we do and what we stand for, and that's elevating the industry. Right? And we do that through uh, leadership and education and building, and building each a community. Other. That's right. Yes. All right. We ready to go? We'll All come right. Back. Bye. We'll come back. We'll say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs>